Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am still Kathy Groover. And we are excited to be, I am. It just well, I'm am. glad it, that you still are. I am. Yeah. You know, you don't know. We go away for a little bit. You're not sure what you're going to get. Uh, we are going through the last of the seven habits of good leaders that we have been talking about for a couple episodes now. So the first two, we've got relationships. We've got thinking strategically. We have dynamic communication use your face. And we have being a curious learner. Jason, you know, so far you and I, we've nailed all these. We got them down. So <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Okay. Just, just a pause, just disclaimer. I'm still working on all these things myself too. Right. I mean, but it's, yeah. We're good at it. I mean, I, I would say we're above average. We're above average. Cool. I think on these. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Cool. I Let's see what the last three are, though. You never know when we're going to fall short. So what are the last three? So the last three, the next one is courage to be themselves. Oh, I do not have a problem with that one. I know. If any, <laughs> if any of you have been listening right to, to this, you know that we're kind of all about this. But but it's it's an important thing, right? Because, you know, so much, so, so many people are afraid of what other people are going to think. They're afraid of the judgment. They're afraid of being cast out that they don't really have the courage to be themselves. Yep. And so what ends up happening is, you know, you end up becoming like a plastic Barbie doll that you, you know, just do and say and are what everyone else expects you to do. Mm -hmm. Now doing that again, there's some, there's some serious psychological issues for doing that. Cause that's playing with cognitive dissident fire yeah, yeah. Right. You'll go crazy if you're always pretending to be somebody else. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but what, but, but the important thing about it is, you know, we all bring uniqueness to what we do. Kathy, you can only give a speech the way that you give it based on your experience, your mm -hmm. life, your personality. Right. Yep. And it's going to land much better when it's done you know, authentically you again, yep. folks, authentic is another word that a lot of people are using, uh -huh. but that's kind of what we're, what we're talking about here is the courage to be yourself, just show yep. up and be you because only you can lead in certain ways. Right. I mean, imagine if, if Gandhi had said, well, you know, I'm a little short Indian man. I'm not a, I'm not a tall European. So how can I help change the world? Well, no, he was who he was, right? Uh -huh. And again, think about a lot of these different leaders or, you know, other people that you look up to, they're themselves. Yeah. They show up as who they are, right? We know who they are. We appreciate their honesty, uh -huh. their authenticity. And, you know, I can say something, you know, 20 times to you and Kathy can say it one time just making this up right and the 20 times i say it didn't land but kathy says it one time in the way mm -hmm. that she can say it yeah and now you get it yeah yes 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 that so <laughs> one of the habits is courage to be yourself yeah and not and not be afraid to do that and i use courage on purpose because it takes courage to actually oh. do yes. do that and also to go back to, you know, we try so hard to morph ourselves into what other people want us to be. Sometimes that's a perception. It's a perception of what we think we want other people to be. So for example, when I finished my PhD, I was like, okay, I have to be really serious now. And I made my website very serious. I'm a corporate speaker and I'm a PR, Dr. Kathy Gruber. And I like, I changed my headshot from the really fun, like outdoor one to <laughs> it wasn't that because I hate those pictures, but, but it's like, I started to change everything. And finally, one of the, like the radio guest list kind of things that I was on, the guy's like, um, so I noticed you changed your picture and you're like, you kind of changed the, like, what's, what's going on. And I said, well, I have a PhD now. <laughs> I could almost hear him. I could almost hear him on the email go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Aren't you still made, Kathy it, underneath? It, it made no sense. And it's funny. Cause when I, when I started to put the red in my hair, um my then at the time husband goes why are you doing that and I said because well, I've always wanted red streaks in my hair and he goes oh okay 
Dr. Kathy Groover, you think they're going to take you seriously when you show up at Google to do a talk? And I said, yeah. Because this is not a reflection of I'm a bad speaker. This is not a reflection of I don't know what I'm doing or, you know, it's like I didn't get face tattoos and put spikes through my face. You know, it's like it's a red streak. A lot of people have these now. So it was his perception of are they going to deem you not professional because you've got a streak in your hair? 20 years ago, maybe not now. So it's like, this is my way of just throwing a little bit of self-expression and it lets people know I'm fun. I'm a little bit offbeat. I'm a little bit quirky. I'm, you know, this is the perfect expression of who I really am. Even though my headshot may, I'm smiling and stuff, but they, you know, they may see my credentials and then the picture and go, oh, okay. She's, she's a bigger, well-rounded person than we thought. So yeah, express yourself, find a way to do that. Well, and it's becoming more acceptable now, folks, yeah. too, right? I mean, again, for a lot of years, <clears throat> we were all afraid to let our our freak flag fly. Now it's it's okay. In fact, you know, that's to me, that's what makes the world a beautiful place. Yeah. Is how all of us are a little bit different. We're a big melding pot. And I just mm -hmm. find people fascinating. Yeah. Right? This is why I love the conversation we had with the dominatrix. If you guys haven't heard that issue, that episode, you, we just sparked your interest there because it, it is about, you know, tapping into who you really are, finding a way to express that, finding the strength and the courage to just be who you are. And, you know, that's why I love that episode. So, yeah. Okay. So be yourself. We got that. Down. Be yourself. There. Be yourself. Got it. The next Check. one is leading from the inside. So I think we've already kind of done a, a, an earlier episode here. I've done some on my Jamming uh -huh. with Jason podcast already about this too, but it's, it's about the, the whole idea that, you know, and, and, and this kind of ties in from the courage to be yourself as well. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of times a perception that you have to act, dress and do things in a certain way. Yeah. Um, that's just not true anymore. Okay. And and what ends up happening so much of the time, especially in corporate America, is people are taught to be leaders that command and control other people, that yeah. use fear and punishment to get people to do what they want. Now, the roots of that go back to the military. It's especially since the Second World War. Mm -hmm. You had these millions of men who, who fought in the, in the war come home and that leadership training that they had in the military got translated into yep. the organizations. Corporate, yep. And so it was the, I'm the general, you must obey my orders kind of a thing. And, you know, honestly, it probably worked okay for a lot of the people that were familiar with that. Now, I don't know when they got rid of the draft here in the U.S., mm. but the, the, the percentage of people here who have had military service much, much lower, right? So again, that kind of command and control leadership doesn't sit well yeah. with most people. Yeah, it's today. not the culture anymore. They not don't the want that, no. It's not what's expected. And in mm -hmm. fact, so, and, and what I find too is that, you know, again, it's not, it's not how you dress. It's not how you look. It's not the title that you have. It's who you are from the inside out. Yeah. And so again, if you want to be a more powerful person, you've got to work on yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that the Gandhi quote, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. Yes. I love that idea. But again, how does that start? It, he's, he's not telling you to go do things, right? He said, if you want to change the world, what do you do? Be the change. Yeah. He's not telling you to do anything. He's telling you to be a different person. Yeah. And so that's why these habits are those kinds of things. This is how you be a different person. Yeah. You're more authentic. You're caring. You're emotional. It's okay to do that, right? Mm -hmm. To have emotional intelligence and to use that and to have that power come from the inside out. So I, I usually use the analogy of, well, you know, pick a dictator or think of a third world country dictator mm -hmm. versus think of a monk. Two different kinds of people, right? Who do you want to follow, the dictator or the monk? Yeah. And again, not religion aside, that's not what I'm, but, but right. kind <laughs> right. of the right. difference of the people, right? As far as who you would want to to have lead you and who you would want to follow as well. Yeah. 
And I think to go back to the whole like author kind of authoritarian boss is I think one of the things that was missing then was that humanity, that instinct, that intuition. And, you know, to me, if you just said to me, lead from the inside, to me, that is this sort of like um, intuitive, compassionate, empathetic kind of leadership as opposed to blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah. So that's when you said that. That's kind of what what came to me. Well, good because that's exactly what I was intending to, right? Yeah. Is that is that more of it comes from your intuition, yeah, and your feeling. You know, yeah. we have we have a head, we have a heart, we have a gut. Thinking, feeling, doing, right, and mm -hmm. so we have to balance all of that as well. And so, yeah. intuition and leadership is becoming much more important. And again, yeah. there's certain work you have to do to create that internal power source. It's also the same as external power versus internal power. Yeah. Which again is the monk versus the dictator. Yeah. So cool. Woohoo. All right. That was six. All right. So one, one more. One more. Should we right? tease it? No, we should do it. We should do it now. Well, I think we have time. I okay. think I think we have time. Well, we've already started strung it out for him over three episodes. We're like, give it to me, damn it. Give it we to me. We have a lot to say. Patience, people. Patience, patience, my people. And it's not patience, patience is not the last one. <laughs> but, that is, but that is a good virtue. It is a good one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what's the last one? So the last one is ask for help. Oh. So mm. again, you'll see that there's kind of some tie-ins on some of this other stuff, but mm -hmm. you know, and in in especially from a curious learner perspective, right? Yep. I mean, if you are a curious learner, you're probably going to be asking for help. But, but what I find is, you know, especially the more, the higher up we go in organizations, let's say the more education we have mm -hmm. the less we feel like we need help from others or i can figure this out i can do it on my own yeah and and so the problem is you know then you're just stuck and usually you stay stuck where mm -hmm. you are thinking that you can just figure this out on your own yeah well you can you can be on a slow boat to china trying to figure this all out on your own yeah. Or you can actually ask for help and you can do some things that put you on a rocket ship instead. Yeah. Choice is up to you, slow boat to China or rocket ship, right? Yeah. I prefer the rocket ship myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as a result of that, actually asking for help and realizing that we do all need help. Yeah. Right. Well, and that goes along with the relationships too. And I told the story during that one of me asking a client of mine to, can you drop me at the car place? You know, um, so I mean, that's just a very simple example of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the other one thing I was going to say was I was always told the sign of a good leader is to surround yourself with people who know more than you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I don't do my own taxes. I don't do my own uh car repairs i don't do my you know it's like i've surrounded myself even just me as i'm not in a corporation or a big organization but i still have a team you know i have surrounded myself with people who know more than me and it's that collaboration it's that asking i mean before we just jumped on for this recording you and i brainstormed a little bit a talk i have to give because i can't do it all myself i wanted your opinion on that because i value what you do and i knew you had some good insight so it you can't the no man is an island that's how many how many different things can we toss out but you know it's true we have to surround ourselves with people who we trust who aren't just going to be yes men because that's a thing of the past too that goes with that authoritarian kind of you know mad what was it uh, mad men was it that you know that yeah, kind of leader mad men, mad men. <clears throat> 1950s corporation we're, yeah we're in a different era of leadership and and organizations and so you know asking for help, not being embarrassed to ask for help, not being afraid of being rejected, not being afraid, you know, you have to tap into that vulnerability. And it's what it comes down to all of this, the communication, the relationships that all has to do with being vulnerable. So, you know, we all have that part of ourselves and we have to find a way to trust that we uh, can be vulnerable around people and that it's going to work out. Okay. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll go there for, for just a little bit too, you know, before we wrap up there, because you, you, you raise a very good point about the vulnerability. And this is one of the reasons why this is in here, right? If you, mm. if you think you know everything and you never ask for any help and I got this and I'm going to take care of it, you know, like I said, you're slow boat to China first off, right? You're going to, you're going to progress very slow, but also to everybody around you, you're kind of an asshole sometimes, right? Because, <laughs> because you, yeah. 
you bring off this error of I know what I'm talking about. I know better than you. Mm-hmm. And we try to go through and, and show this, this air of invincibility mm-hmm. that a lot of people are taught, right? In mm-hmm. order to be a great leader, in order for people to respect me, I have to be invincible. I have to be that superhero. Well, even folks, you know, in the superhero sagas, every superhero has an Achilles heel. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting because you, you you brought up about that vulnerability. And again, it's okay as a leader to be vulnerable. In oh. fact, I will tell you, you're much sexier when you are vulnerable. Now, how do I know this? Because I've watched this in different group settings. Yeah. Where a man who again, right, men, what are we taught? We have to be invincible. We have to be strong. We have to be the macho one, right? Macho, macho man. Well, it's a little different thing, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we, MCA. <laughs> All right, bring a little village people into this too. But, you know, that, that we have to be strong. We have to be mm. macho, whatever. But I have yeah. seen this play out many, many times is where a man in a group setting will actually express and show vulnerability, show emotion, might actually get a little weepy. Yeah. You know, I cry sometimes. And I will tell you, that's like the sexiest guy in the room because all the women are like, holy shit, that was, whoa, Mm -hmm. that's sexy, right? And so, you know, again, a lot of times the stuff that we've been taught is not really true. Or maybe it was true at some point, but it's not really true anymore. Because we evolve and change because we're curious learners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, again, the best, the best leaders are the ones who actually do ask for help. They're yeah. not afraid, right? Because I'll, I'll tell you on this too, I've, I've, I've seen this transpire both ways. Um, the, the people who are willing to hire people smarter and better than them mm-hmm. to work for them. The people that do that grow significantly. And again, I worked for one of the people I worked for was a billionaire Uh guys, financially successful. He used to always say that he hired smarter people than him to run it. He, he wasn't, uh, he he was okay with asking for help with bringing in the best and the brightest people to help him do what he needed to do. On the flip side, I remember this one, this one person that I worked with, she was very, very um couldn't be questioned Uh, and so she would hire people less qualified less talented than her sure right because she didn't she didn't want to be questioned whatever else i will tell you that part of the business there were some really stupid people that worked in that area in fact i don't even know well if they would have worked for anybody else those people would have been fired because they were actually inept yeah. At doing their job. And so you can either choose to upscale by asking for help, bringing in people that are smarter than you to do, or you can go down the spiral <laughs> the other mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Yeah. There's a <clears> lot, of, <throat> there really is a lot of choice with this. And unfortunately, so many of the things, these seven is sort of ingrained in us. It's programmed into us. Um, and it's okay to break out of that programming. It's okay to question those things and make a different choice. It's okay to change, which is what we're talking about in between recording today is, is mm-hmm. about, you know, that resistance to change and really being self-aware and reflective because all of these take kind of sitting with yourself and going, what do I want? What are my goals? Who am I? And how can I be a better version of myself? And I think that's what all this is about. Well, and I'm sure there's some of the, some of the people listening, you might be one of them are going, Hey, this sounds like a, this makes a lot of sense to me, but I don't know how to do that. Uh-huh. Well, don't worry. I didn't know how to do it either. Right. Yeah. But why do you think we're talking about this? Cause I help people do this. I help people figure out how to change and how to transform and, and work through and do some of these changes. Cause yep. like you said, Kathy change is scary. We've talked about it before on the podcast. Um, but it's all things that you can learn. Other people have done this, uh-huh. you know, and if other people have done it, don't you think you can do it too? Yeah. Yeah, we can. We I can. believe in, I believe in all of you. Yes. Yay. Cool. Oh my gosh. I love this. This was such a great idea to go through these seven. So to recap relationships, think strategically, have dynamic 
communication. Uh, be a curious learner, be yourself, be your authentic self, uh, lead from the inside and ask for help. I love it. Good stuff. Well, and when you do, like I said, I've just seen these are habits that successful people that I've studied yep. have. They practice every day. And again, I use the word habits because it's not something like you can do this for a day or two and then forget <laughs> about it. It's like these are habits that you have to develop and work on every day, every week and do them constantly, you know, to, yep. to be able to stay successful in whatever it is that you're doing, yeah. whether that's your personal life, you know, again, all of these things would help you in your personal yep. relationships oh God, in life as well. Absolutely. And don't we need to keep those strong too? So mm -hmm. yeah, oh, this has been so great. I love this. I love this little series. So yay. So everybody go out, start to make these changes, really look at yourself, hold up that mirror and see how you can make changes in your life for the better. Talk to Jason. He's got a whole program on this. So, you know, head to your site and you can figure out how to do a little more deeper dive into all this. And for now, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great week. And we're going to catch you on the next episode of Fire Nerd Podcast. See ya. See ya.